war in Ukraine, an energy shortage, and very high inflation. In other words, the EU is in crisis. However, in a State of the Union, Ursula von der Leyen, the EU Commission President, presented a plan of how to tackle this in the year ahead. Ursula's speech was almost an hour long, but I've condensed her main talking points into a short five-minute video, where I briefly describe her 10 priorities. Make sure to stick around until the 10th priority, as this was an absolute bombshell that I really wasn't expecting. Firstly, Ursula von der Leyen recommitted the EU support for Ukraine. She promised that EU sanctions are here to stay, and that 100 million euros will be donated to reconstructing Ukrainian schools. She also proposed extending the EU single market and the free of charge roaming area to Ukraine to give their economy a much needed boost. Secondly, the Commission chief acknowledged that prices for energy were 10 times as high as before the pandemic. To stop this from further spiraling out of control, she proposed mandatory electric savings of 5% throughout the union. She also wants to decouple gas from electric prices, as under the current system, known as merit order, the final price of electricity is set by the most expensive fuel needed to meet all power demands. In this case, gas. This means that as gas prices soar, so do electricity bills. Next, she proposed a cap on the revenues of companies that are producing electricity at low cost, and a windfall tax to partially capture the huge profits by fossil fuel companies. This could raise more than 140 billion euros in extra funds that can be passed down to the consumer. Thirdly, the president strongly encouraged the EU to continue to fight climate change by cutting fossil fuel emissions to 45% by 2030, and also cutting all energy ties with Russia. She also wants to invest heavily into the hydrogen sector and buy an additional 10 EU aircraft and three EU helicopters to help combat forest fires. And of course, Ursula wouldn't be German if she didn't mention public debt, which has now far exceeded the agreed EU limits in many of the EU member states. She didn't go into detail on specific policies, but mentioned that there should be more flexibility, more accountability, and simpler rules to drive strategic investment. A full proposal will be released by the Commission in October. Next is immigration. The current EU unemployment rate is very low at 6%, yet the open jobs are at a record high, especially at our hospitals and airports. To address this, von der Leyen wants more EU investment into higher education and more qualified staff from abroad to strengthen EU growth. She talked about a common EU immigration approach and mentioned that the EU's action towards Ukrainian refugees should not be the exception, but rather a blueprint going forward. Next is corruption, where Ursula von der Leyen showed concern about the undemocratic practices in the middle of the European Union. Although the president did not single out a specific member state, she did say that the EU budget will continue to be linked to EU values such as the respect for the judicial independence and the rule of law. This has already started with a formal procedure to block funds to Hungary and a close eye on Poland, whose COVID recovery fund depends on domestic reforms. The president's next priority was access to strategic resources, where the president claimed that rare materials such as lithium are crucial for the continent and will soon be more important than even gas and oil. The EU currently sources most of this from one country, and this needs to change. Von der Leyen proposed a European Critical Material Act with three key components. Building a more diversified and resilient supply chain by sourcing through countries like Chile. Building a European network of raw material agencies and building a raw material storage capacity here within the EU. And yes, just like Scholz and Macron, Von der Leyen is also calling for a larger European Union, with potentially nine additional members. This includes the six Western Balkan states, Ukraine, Moldova, and Georgia. Check out my video above for more information regarding accession. The president also threw her political weight behind Macron's plan to create a European political community. This is a forum of European countries that would meet multiple times per year to discuss matters of common interest to all of Europe such as climate change, digitalization, security, and energy. Does this mean we will welcome the UK back into an EU light? Check out my video above for more information. And now, onto the President's final point, which I believe is the most significant one yet, 
where she called for an EU convention. This is where EU member states review the current EU treaties and can make changes. For example, this could fundamentally change the EU's objectives, rules for EU institutions, how decisions are made, and the relationship between the EU and its member countries. This could lead to qualified majority voting in the Council of the European Union, or an EU constitution, or even a more realistic and quick path for new EU members to join the bloc. So these are the 10 priorities that von der Leyen presented in her State of the Union for the year 2022 and 2023. Like I said at the start of the video, I really like priority 10, as I feel this is a prerequisite to a lot of our other proposals. I just don't think we will see more EU members, such as Ukraine, before EU treaty change. Neither do I think the EU will be particularly effective at climate change or energy solidarity without removing the veto vote. And this, by and large, also requires EU treaty change. But what is your favorite priority? Do you think they are realistic? If you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe. Until next time.